Hi, this is Phil Shapiro, Adjunct Professor of Education at American University. I've gathered together some material to present a possible usage of Clark Elementary School for FIRST Robotics. There's many educators here in the D.C. area who believe that FIRST Robotics is one of the best ways of harnessing our youth's interest in science and technology. Let's take a look at some of the reasons why FIRST brings benefit to our community. FIRST Robotics actively engages youth in learning math, science, engineering, teamwork, and related social skills. Harnesses the time and talent of community volunteers in a meaningful way. Students learn hands-on skills and related technical skills, such as computer programming, web page building, and video editing. They also learn soft skills, such as gracious professionalism. Here's a map of all the robotic teams here in the Washington, D.C. area. You'll see there's quite a number in Virginia, but a growing number also right here in the District of Columbia. Let's find out more about some of the people involved in FIRST Robotics. There are a number of very distinguished folks, and I asked people to send me a bio. Let me just uh, highlight some of these folks. Lucinda Crabtree is president of Crabtree & Company, a marketing communications firm specializing in presenting science and technology. Lucinda's team is frequently called upon to craft everything from museum exhibits to school posters, explaining the challenges, successes, and opportunities of science and engineering. Clients include NASA, WWF, Carnegie Institution, the Smithsonian, American Chemical Society, and many others. She was a director of Washington's Discovery Creek Children's Museum and actively involved in promoting children's health and scientific literacy. Lucinda serves as the co-chair of the steering committee for the U.S. Conference of Mayors. She is a veteran volunteer with FIRST. Charles Britt, Founder and Chairman, Board of Directors, Center for Minority Achievement in Science and Technology, Washington, D.C. Let's go to his web bio. His web bio is very interesting and informative. Hold on just a second. Charles H. Britt is currently a network engineer with Science Applications International Corporation, a five, Fortune 500 government contractor. Um, Mr. Britt has a long and distinguished record of achievement. His outstanding work, both academic and extracurricular, has earned him numerous awards and honors. A partial list of these honors include State of Maryland Merit Scholarship Award, the President's Educational Award, and being nominated International Who's Who in Information Technology, the Carl Rowan Foundation, founded by the renowned journalist the late Carl Rowan, also featured him in the June to 1996 issue of Jet Magazine for his academic accomplishments. That's just a little bit about Charles Britt. Let's find out some more. Matthew Burke is an assistant professor of computer science at George Washington University. Among his primary responsibilities are devising programs to recruit students into the field. Recent activities include developing a summer camp for high school and middle school students and revising robotic exercises for his introductory computer science class. Kathy Kielmeyer has volunteered for, with FIRST for the past four years. She has a BS in math from MIT. She's a senior research engineer at SET Corporation in Arlington, Virginia. She recently won a small contract to design a system of hull inspection robots for the Navy. John Mahoney, mathematics teacher at Ma Banneker Academic High School. John was recently inducted into the National Teachers Hall of Fame in the year 2005. Let's take a quick peek at this. John Mahoney. He's been a classroom teacher for 33 years. A lot of it at Sidwell Friends School here in DC. And now he's a mathematics teacher at Banneker Academic High School and he has been inducted into the National Teachers Hall of Fame. Let's go back and find out about some other folks. 
Corinna Lathan, founder and president of Anthrotronics, an engineering design firm in Silver Spring, Maryland. She has a master's and a doctorate degree from MIT. She received a Maryland Top Innovator of the Year Award. She holds a robotics patent. Let's find out just a little bit more about Corinna Lathan. I have it set up over here. Dr. Lathan founded Anthrotonics, a human factors engineering and research company in 1999, specializing in advanced human interface solutions. Uh, Dr. Lathan also serves as an associate adjunct professor in the Department of Aerospace Engineering at the University of Maryland and is actively involved in educational outreach programs that empower women and minorities to pursue their careers in science and technology. Dr. Lathan has received numerous awards, including Maryland's Top Innovator of the Year, MIT Technology Review, Magazine's Top 100 World Innovators, and the Women in Technology Leadership Award for Entrepreneurship. Bonnie Rosquez is has a Master's of Engineering from Johns Hopkins University. She is an expert at Google SketchUp, the 3D drawing program. She's written several books about SketchUp. Lana Cohn, mathematics teacher at Theodore Roosevelt Senior High School. She is the lead mentor for the Roosevelt First Robotics Team, recently interviewed on WHUR Radio, featured in a cover story in Washington City Paper. Let's listen a bit to that WHUR Radio interview with Herman Washington. Here it comes. Here's a little snippet. Uh, Ms. Cohen, why should students want to be involved with this uh, robotics competition? I mean, the robotics competition, it's an amazing experience and opens a lot of doors for students. We've had a student who was a member of the team until she graduated high school last year who had a summer internship with one of our engineering mentors at a robotics company in Silver Spring. So certainly being part of the team opens a lot of opportunities. And when they go to college, we've had also several students go on to major in science and technology fields, and they have a leg up on the other students that are in their undergraduate class because they have this hands-on experience, this project experience, and they have this practical connection to what they'll be learning in their classes. And I, I guess the engineering part of it can, should be key because it's sponsored by NASA. Um, we had NASA sponsorship for the past two years. This year is our first year that we do not have NASA sponsorship. So we have been fortunate enough to get sponsorship from Booz Allen Hamilton and BAE Systems, as well as a lot of smaller individual donations. And we certainly are still in the fundraising process for this school year. Let's find out a little bit more about um, Lana Cohn and the impact that robotics has had on her students. A female student received a pair of uh, paid summer internship at a local robotics company. One former student is an electrical engineering major and first became interested in engineering through the robotics team. Another former student is the first in her family to attend college. Two former robotics team members are 2008 recipients of the Trachtenberg Scholarship. The Trachtenberg Scholarship is a full scholarship to George Washington University worth over $200,000. Both students plan to pursue science majors. Now, there has been a study by Brandeis University on the value of FIRST Robotics academically. Recently, Brandeis University Center for Youth and Communities conducted an independent retrospective survey of FIRST Robotics, competition participants, and, uh, and compared results to a group of non-FIRST students with similar backgrounds. Highlights of the study finding include, when compared with the comparison group, FIRST students are more than three times as likely to major specifically in engineering roughly 10 times as likely to have had an apprenticeship, internship, or co-op job in their freshman year, significantly more likely to expect to achieve a postgraduate degree, more than twice as likely to expect to pursue a career in science and technology, nearly four times as likely to expect to pursue a career specifically in engineering, more than twice as likely to volunteer in their communities. Let's take a look at um, some of the web pages built by the FIRST Robotic Teams. 
Here's a couple of web pages. Oakton, Virginia has won uh, awards for their web page. Look at how nicely it's done. We have the team information here. US First, resources, supporters, and under media, both photos and videos. This was all made with students in partnership with the volunteer adults there. Let's look at Timonium, Maryland, Delaney Robotics. This website has also won awards, and it's very nicely done. Check it out. Here's their team. These are the students. Almost always with FIRST Robotics, you will see a combination of young women and young men. Generally speaking, the robotics does bring gender diversity to the learning situation. And over here, here's Banneker's um, 2005 website, which is playful and interesting. Um, we have a little, there's a team survey over here where different members of the team answered questions. And there is a multimedia that was made this year. I've put it up here on the Internet Archive. We can even go look for it. The Internet Archive is archive.org. Let's put in Banneker Robotics. Banneker Robotics and search for that. And here we can hear the actual voices of students when they're working on the robotics tournament. We're going to click on this thing over here called Banneker2005.htm. This was made with free software called PowerBullet for Windows. Banneker High School First Robotics Competition in Washington, D.C. 2005. I'm clicking on the little red arrow at the bottom. We're going to hear their voices. I want you to especially pay attention to the voices of students as they're working together. Listen to how they sound so much like adults in the workplace trying to get work done. I joined SECME and I'm in the robot competition because, first of all, my father and my grandfather were mechanics. And so I said, well, you know, I need to learn to do some of these things. I'm attracted to this competition because I like technology and I like a good challenge. Also, I wanted a chance to make friends. And this competition is a great way to do that. It's also really fun to learn about robotics. Yeah. Oh, there, okay. And the electronic okay. and yeah, electronic okay. panels are gonna just straight up. So like we're this. gonna have some board yeah. right here, right? Yeah, this is like oh, imagine okay. like imagine this thing going up. Yeah. Feet, and the electronic so panels, the electronic and then, and then we'll have one next to the bottom. One foot Mr. Hannum said down, the right? electronic oh, right panels okay. are gonna go straight. So it really can't be as So we can have this thing swing down into it. Oh, okay. And then the A frame itself we have the whole there's nothing up here but the frames. What I like the most about Segni First Robotics is it's very hands-on and the students are able to use the tools and put a lot of time and effort into the robot and it becomes like our own creation. I like to go on a competition because I can I meet new people, we work as a team and we see how things work. What attracted me was the competition. The reason I'm involved with the robotics competition is I'm very excited about the school and I like providing support to it that it can't get elsewhere. I'm involved with FIRST because it gives my students the really important needed practical applications for the mathematics that I teach them that I always talk about in class. FIRST also gives my students a great view of what a realistic job would be like, working with time pressures, monetary pressures, working with people collectively, brings everything together in a great way. The, the reason that I came into robotics is so that I can do whatever I want and do it whatever my imagination lets me do. The neat thing about this robotics competition is that project-based learning is the most meaningful kind of learning. The more we expose students to this, the more they'll enjoy the learning process. What I like about the robotics competition is that I get to meet lots of nice and very smart teenagers. So there you've had it. You get to hear and see the voices and sounds of these uh, first robotic teams. And um, this is possibly one of the best uses of the space at Clark Elementary School. I would think in particular the use of the space at Clark Elementary would mesh very well with a computer refurbishing organization, such as the one on Georgia Avenue in, in Washington, D.C. called First Time Computers, which not only redistributes computers, donated computers to families that 
do not have a computer, low-income families, but it also teaches um, teenagers how to fix computers. And that kind of synergy could be um, so valuable at Clark Elementary School. Another reason why that Clark Elementary School would be good for FIRST Robotics is there's a lot of difficulty scheduling weekend robotic activities at the schools in D.C. D.C. schools are typically open five days a week. So special arrangements need to be made for robotic teams to get together to do their work on weekends. And if uh, Clark Elementary School were available on weekends, then you wouldn't have to have special arrangements. Clark Elementary School is also about a half a mile away from Theodore Roosevelt um, Senior High School, where Lana Cohn is the robotic team lead mentor. And it's about, it's less than a mile from First Time Computer on Georgia Avenue. So I see a possible synergy if we had the use of that building, both for FIRST Robotics and for computer refurbishing, um, and make that a seven-day-a-week learning center where uh, inventors and people involved in the creative process of invention get together, learn from each other, and create cultural wealth and economic wealth for our communities.